Hey guys, Eddie here from Delete Property. Today I want to do a real quick video just explaining a little bit about an answer to a question that I was recently asked from one of our clients. And long story short, the question was, Eddie, how does the how does your accounts look? When you buy your first investment property or multiple, and you've got your loan, and then you've got your normal account that your rent that your a wage might, might go into, then do you need another account? That was the question. Do you need another account that rental income comes into? Do you need to separate your rental income from your normal wage and your everyday spending account? And how does it work with the loan? Does the do you have to pay the loan manually every month? So it was it was about two or three questions in one. Basically, um, if the client hopefully will watch this video and you know. Um, I remember the conversation, but this is, I just, it, it was a really good question because I haven't been asked it in a very, very long time, but I remember when I was first buying investment properties or first looking to do it, I had the same question and I had, I only figured it out by actually going through the process and doing it, figuring it out. But how it kind of works, I want to break it down for anyone that's maybe they haven't bought, maybe you're young, maybe you just, you know, you're, you're just unsure or you want to find out a little bit more. Um, I've drawn this behind me, basically. So let's say I've bought one property as an example, and the property, let's say it's worth 330,000, right? So I bought it for uh, 330K. I did a 10% deposit on it, and that's my loan right there. So my loan is, you can see it. So let's say, hypothetically, I'm with Commonwealth right now, um, CBA. In my net banking, I could show you my net banking on the phone, but uh, you know, it's probably not the wisest thing to do. Show you all the account numbers and everything. Um, the loan basically pops up on net banking. So you'll have a loan there and you'll say minus 300,000. So in this scenario, I bought a property for 330, then the next day, once it's settled, my loan popped up for 300,000 and it says minus. You know, if it's an investment property and you've got rental income coming in, that's good in my opinion. You know, that's an investment property because that debt there is tax deductible debt and you're gonna use that to create wealth and make money in the long term. So that's how it kind of looks, plain and simple. Your normal account, let's say that you get paid into from your wage, let's say you make minimum wage and you've got 10,000 as a buffer in your normal account. Your, how it usually work, you've got a, there's a few different ways it'll work. You've also got, so right here basically is essentially your, your normal account where your wage goes into, then you've got your loan right here of an offset, as you can sometimes have an offset account as well. If you don't know what an offset account is, check out some of my other videos or Google offset online. Uh, the very simplified version is if you have 50,000 in offset, that's basically will be 50,000 less of interest you'll pay towards your loan, basically. So you only pay interest on 250 if you have 50K sitting in here. So for people that have 100K floating around, usually you put it in an offset account because it offsets your interest. That's the short one about that. But getting back to it, how it works when you first buy a property, this is essentially what it looks like. Um, some investors do it differently. You know, guys, there's no right or wrong. This is how I do it a lot. I've got 21, you know, hopefully 22 properties soon, and I've got multiple lenders. I've got some with Westpac, St. George, NAB, Macquarie, Latrobe, different lenders and all that kind of stuff. We won't get into it. But let's say a person's wage comes in here, goes in this account, and then what I did in the beginning, or I still do it now, my rent. Let's say this property that you're buying, rents for $400 a week. So every single week, $400 minus expenses, is going into the normal account with your wage. So wage and everyday living expenses are coming out of this account. Once a month, if you have your loan, you can put your loan on either weekly, fortnightly, or monthly repayments. It's really up to you. I do all mine on monthly because to me it's easier. Personally, you know, some people think weekly it's easier. It's really there's no right or wrong. Whatever's going to work for you. Let's say every single month, this repayment hypothetically is $1,000 a month, right? So every month, this usually 99% of the time, it automatically direct debits from your nominated account. 
So if you said to the bank, hey, this is the account that I want the mortgage to come out of, usually on the 1st or the 15th, or usually you can pick whatever day is right for you, it'll just automatically deduct $1,000 from here and it'll go on the loan essentially. And then slowly your interest in your principal will go down and down and down, etc. But usually it just comes out automatically. Now, there's no right or wrong. Some people have an offset account and they only have your rent going here and then your repayments come out of your offset account and then you're not mixing it with your everyday expense account. Some people really like, you know, making sure the, the rent pays the mortgage and like it goes in a totally different account. To me, I don't really care. I've got, as an example, like some of the properties that I've got with St. George, the bank is. I've got, I remember, about four different, uh, four different properties and the loans are with St. George Bank. I've just got one normal account. It's one offset account linked to one of the loans. It's also basically the only account that expenses and all that come kind of come out of for those four properties. All the rent goes into the same account. So I don't, out of all the properties, I don't physically have 20 different accounts where the rent goes in this one for that one, the rent goes in that one for that one, the rent goes in this one for that one. I pretty much just simplified it. And I said, these four properties, all the rent's going into one account and all the expenses are coming in one, coming out of one account. To me, it doesn't really matter because when it comes time to do your tax return and your accountant, they will individually look at your income expenditure and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to be very picky about it. A lot of people are very picky about it and most people that are extremely picky and over analytical, they spend too much time analyzing stuff and not enough time doing stuff and actually buying property. So that's my opinion. I guess this is just a, an example, right? So you've got an offset account, your normal account, and your uh, th your loan, basically. If you buy another investment property, just hypothetically, you know, you'll have another loan, as an example. And let's say your loan amounts 200K. Oh, that's okay. Then basically it's the same thing. You don't like, you don't really want, you want your loans to stand separately. This, you know, talking about not cross collateralization, which is another, in another video, but different loans, basically. So different accounts, different loans. But the answer, do you need to have your rent coming in and not touching, going in the same account as your wage? No, it's completely fine. To me, it doesn't really matter. There is no right or wrong. Find out what's gonna work best for you. You can always change it, but what I would definitely recommend is not spending too much time on analyzing things like this. Focus on what you need to do to get your next property and figure out a plan to get there, basically. So you wanna get from A to B, how can I get there? And what's the plan to get there? And how can I shorten that time from, get from getting from A to B? So. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I look forward to chatting to you soon. Any questions, please comment below and I will do my best to answer any and every question that you have.